the canyon at the base of the much photographed formation referred to as Isis Temple is a partially exposed and extremely important rock. This rarely spoken of evidence shows that the layers surrounding the rock had to all have been uncemented at the same time that they were deposited. It also shows that the unhardened layers were rapidly moving in a massive westward flow, as hydroplate theory would expect, before they came to a rest at their current position. This angular block, weighing an estimated 5 to 10 tons, casts great doubt on gradual layers and sequential hardening of deposits over eons of time. At these coordinates, the block of quartzite, which has obviously come from the thick quartzite layer below, is clearly visible in the canyon wall. Ask yourself, what scenario of events could lift this rock so cleanly to its current position? Hardened rock layers would never smoothly deform around and encase the rock. Surrounding layers above and below the sharp features of the block have clearly deformed around the edges. Only soft, water-laden sediments would deform locally like this. The block's shape retains sharp sides throughout its thickness. There is no evidence of weathering that would be expected if this block was partially exposed to weather for eons and gradually buried. Geology professor Arthur V. Chadwick correctly identified the lifting force. A very dense, rapidly flowing sand, mud, and water slurry which plucked the block off the tipped Precambrian lower quartzite layers far upstream of the flow. The easiest way to lift and transport such a heavy block is in a dense, liquefied, and therefore very buoyant sediment and water mixture that is flowing at high velocity. Unlike any other theory, hydroplate theory precisely explains this rock's unique position. In fact, as we'll see, every aspect of this, even the orientation of the rock within the layers, precisely matches hydroplate theory's expectations. This rapid transport occurred immediately above the Cambrian-Precambrian interface during hydroplate theory's compression event. Remember, this interface is what has been termed the great unconformity by those holding to uniformitarian geology. But as you've seen in the hydroplate theory overview, there is a simple physics-based explanation once the prevailing dogmas of evolution are abandoned. The great unconformity is actually the natural shear line resulting from the rapid deceleration, sliding, and beveling of sediment layers. Rather than representing one half billion years of time and mysterious erosion processes, the great unconformity formed in hours due to deceleration and sliding on a continental scale. Note the camera here is looking north, therefore the slurry slid from east to west. The crushing, compression, and deceleration of the compression event readily explains the horizontal sliding of soft layers seen in the canyon walls, as well as the spiderweb intrusion of quartz throughout the crushed granitic material. If you'd have placed an indicator in the soft sediment layers produced by the flood before the compression event, it would have moved with the rapidly sliding plates and sediments. But as the plates crashed and began slowing, the indicator would have bent in the direction of the deceleration just as your head bends forward when you slam on the brakes in a car. As this deceleration occurred, resistances slowed the plate, compressing it, causing it to buckle up and deform at points of weakness. This caused unhardened layers still saturated with water to incline and deform with the buckling plate surface. As decelerating layers were lifted up above the apex of buckled regions, uncemented particles above were no longer supported by the solid crystalline rock below and a shear plane quickly developed between supported and unsupported grains. Below the sliding slurry, a sand layer decelerated and compressed first. That rapid compression squeezed up water which lubricated the slide above and aided lubrication of the layers above and heated the quartz sand. This heat and compression changed the sand layer into a metamorphic rock called quartzite. Eventually, the unsupported sediments slid westward along the shear plane, which easily beveled the layers below and caused further liquefaction and horizontal layering of the sediments above. As this occurred, a block from the quartzite below broke away and was lifted and carried west by the flowing sediments. As the flow slowed, the heavy block gently settled and locally deformed the soft layers it was encased in. Centuries later, this rock was exposed as the Grand Canyon was carved, revealing strong evidence of catastrophic flowing of soft sediments while generating many difficult questions for those who believe that the canyon's layers were deposited and hardened slowly.
There's probably a reason you don't see this rock pictured at the Grand Canyon's Visitor Center. It certainly doesn't fit popular narrative. 